Film is expensive. You know, I'm not saying anything new here. We know this, it's been expensive and it's only getting more expensive. Since this like more recent film resurgence amongst millennials and Gen Z, over the last couple of years, I've seen more and more people look to try and emulate film digitally. From digital Fujifilm cameras and their recipes to Lightroom presets that are dedicated to getting that film kind of look, it seems like everyone wants to get the effect of film without actually shooting it. So why would you want to do this? I know that trying to emulate film digitally is something that is looked down upon by a set few people in the film community. But you know, there's a lot of reasons why you might want to emulate film digitally. Firstly, you like the look, but film is too expensive to shoot. And then secondly, there's an argument that digital is easier to shoot than film, especially in this day and age. So in today's video, I'm going to be looking at the Dehancer Lightroom plugin. And what this plugin does is it helps to emulate the, the look, the colors, the characteristics of film um, and apply it to digital imagery. I'm going to be looking at it and exploring whether or not you can actually accurately emulate film with this plugin and whether or not it is a good option if you're looking to emulate that film look digitally. I have been gifted this license for the purpose of this review, but you know, my thoughts on this are completely unbiased. I'm not being asked to present a specific point of view. So this is really going to be my honest opinion of the plugin. So let's get stuck in. So the way that Dehancer works, as I said before, it's a plugin for Lightroom. They also have plugins available for Photoshop, Affinity Photo, Capture One, as well as video plugins for um, DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro, as well as After Effects. But again, in this video, I'm going to be specifically referring to the one for Lightroom. So Dehancer offers you 63 film profiles, which are essentially like um, think of them like presets. So aside from being presets, Dehancer also offers a range of adjustments within the plugin. So things like um, being able to adjust film grain, bloom, halation, you know, those smaller imperfections and characteristics that film has. Let's jump into the software and have a look. Uh, the reason I'm using this image in particular is because I actually did shoot this photo on film. So there's one on digital and one on film shot on Portrait 400. And I'm going to be doing a comparison to the best of my ability um, and seeing if I can emulate the results that I got that I actually shot on film with the Dehancer plugin. So now that I have Dehancer open, we'll have a look at some of the film profiles. So this one is their Portra 400. And as we can see, when we actually compare it directly to the Portra 400 that I actually shot on this shoot, it looks very dissimilar, you know, it's very desaturated. Um, so what we're gonna do is use the adjustment tools here to see if we can make this Portra 400 look a little bit more like what Portra 400 actually looks like. So the first thing I'm doing is playing around with the temperature, the tints, those kind of colors, trying to correct some of the colors here. One thing that I'm not a massive fan about with Dehancer, although it's great to be able to adjust the temperature and the tint and stuff like that, it adjusts all of the different kind of parts of the image. So you've got your blacks, your shadows, your whites, your highlights, and it adjusts all of those at the same time. And it would be nice to be able to, within the plugin, just control, say, the highlights. Although we can do that in Lightroom afterwards, and I will be doing that in Lightroom afterwards, it would be nice to be able to do it all in one bit of software. So sticking with Portrait 400 for now, one of the options I do really like is the ability to adjust the color head. So changing your yellows, your blues, your magentas, your greens, your cyans, your reds, all of those CMYK colors. Um, that tool is really powerful. Again, I do wish that you had the ability to kind of refine that to just highlights, just shadows, etc. but it's still a good tool to have. As you can see with the actual portrait 400 on the left, and the Dehancer image on the right. Um, we are getting there with the colors. It's not a precise match, um, but we're getting there a little bit and it's starting to look a little bit more like film, especially compared to the original digital. But let's open up a second image and take a look if we can try and get this film emulation more accurately um, by using a 
a film profile that isn't Portrait 400, so maybe one of the others. So let's take a look at some of the other film presets that they have available. Um, I don't think that the Portrait 400 one is that accurate, so I'd like to kind of go through some of the other profiles and see what they look like and how they fare and if they look a little bit more like film. Um, I guess the thing is as well is that this is emulating film and although they have titles of the film stocks they're trying to emulate, um, lots of different factors come into the way that film looks when you're developing it, when you're processing it, scanning it. And so it's gonna be difficult for presets to accurately emulate one film stock when one film stock can be shot in a variety of different ways. Um, so I'm going to look through some of the different presets on the plugin and we'll see if there are other presets that kind of look a little bit more realistic to film. So far I actually think that this Agfa, Agfa Color XRS 200, which is a film stock I've never used, um, looks the best on this digital image or looks maybe the most film-like. So we're going to again go into the different tools within Dehancer and see if we can kind of try to emulate the look of the actual film photo. You see, I definitely feel as though with this Agfa for profile, it is more realistic than the Portra. The Portra was a little bit too desaturated for me, especially when it came to skin tones. That's not something that you want to mess about with. So if the film profile is not emulating skin tones properly, then that's a little bit of an issue. But I think that we've got a pretty good base here. So I'm going to save it and bring it into um, Lightroom and just tweak it slightly. So you can see that after a few tweaks, especially within the color curves, we've got a result that, although it's not exact, it does kind of emulate film. Um, and I feel as though, again, it would be nice to be able to select certain aspects of the image in the tonal range within Dehancer plugin. That would make it a lot easier to kind of um, get this more accurate view. But Dehancer, from my experience here, does provide you with a really good base preset as to what film does look like. The other thing I like about Dehancer is that once you've done all your adjustments, once you've got it looking how you want it to look, um, like in this video, in this picture here with the Kodak Vision 3, I actually think that this does look quite similar to the actual film, especially in terms of the tones. Um, you can save this as a preset, so then you can apply it to other photos of the same lighting, same colors, same scenarios, like you would do in Lightroom, um, which just helps to speed up your workflow. You can also favorite a film profile. So for example, with this one, because I know it works nicely, I'm gonna favorite it because it might work for some of the other photos as well. Again, this Agfa Chrome, I do feel like is quite realistic to the actual portrait. Um, something nice about Dehancer is that you can kind of emulate the idea of pushing and pulling film and um, so that does also help you to try and effectively emulate the characteristics of film. Next up let's take a look at a black and white um, image. So I don't actually have this photo in black and white but we're just going to not try to emulate an exact copy of this image. This time we're just going to look at how we can emulate film using the profiles. So straight away I think that the black and white does work quite well you know black and white and grainy straight away you can kind of imagine it being film especially when you start to play around with things like halation and bloom which are very specific to film. Another thing to note is that I think that this um, plugin actually emulates 35 millimeter film better than it does 120. Um, probably because when you're shooting on digital, unless you're shooting with a medium format digital camera, you aren't getting that depth of field that you're gonna get with a medium format film photo. And so that bit is difficult to emulate within a plugin. Whereas with 35 millimeter, the sensor is more similar to a DSLR sensor. So the images do look more similar right off the bat. Um, and then you're, all you're doing is then adjusting colors, which I think is a lot easier to do in a plugin because obviously, you know, this plugin is amazing, but it can't work in miracles. It can't create a completely different image than the one that you've shot. 
So what are my overall thoughts of the Dehancer plugin? Overall, I think that it's a really good tool for creating a base, a preset base that you can work from within Lightroom. Some really nice touches are the halation and the bloom tools. They do help to create a film esque kind of character, things that you don't experience with digital photography. It does a good job of making note and utilizing these small imperfections of film. I also really like how adjustable it is. It's not just a preset, you can adjust it, you can um, do certain things and change certain characteristics within the plugin before you take it into Lightroom. And whilst the color profiles aren't like that reminiscent of the specific films that they're labeled as, I do think that they have a film like coloring, a film like quality, which is executed quite successfully. So overall, I feel like Dehancer, you know, you can't perfectly emulate film. You can't perfectly emulate the feeling, the tone and the qualities of film, but it does a pretty close job. If you are interested in trying out Dehancer, then you can use my code in the description to get 10% off. It's Sophia 10 I'm going to put it on screen as well so that you remember it. Thank you so much to Dehancer for letting me try out this tool. I'm really looking forward to trying it out a little bit more and hopefully doing some other videos for you guys once I've tried them out. If you do try out Dehancer or you've tried it out in the past, then let me know what you think and let me know if I'm missing anything. Are there any tools in there that you think I should try out and experiment with? I love shooting film, but you guys know it's getting expensive. And although I'm not going to stop shooting film, it is nice to have a plugin that can help me to emulate film when I'm shooting on digital. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.